So the loop station that we're going to be taking a look at in today's video is the Aeros Loop Studio by Singularity Sound. That's the company that makes the Beat Buddy and all those sort of like drum machine pedals that work really well and sound pretty awesome. And now for full transparency, these guys did drop me an email to check out this pedal. They've sent it out, not paying for this video, but they have given me the pedal for free as well as their sort of MIDI pedal too that I'll show you that's got some awesome features. Now I've had a bunch of people ask me to check this pedal out for a while because it has been out for some time, like 2020 I think it was. But there's a new version that we're looking at this video, which is the gold edition that has some major improvements or some new firmware as well that unlocks some further settings and it sort of takes the whole package to the next level. But so I don't look like I'm selling out getting some free pedals. I have done a deal with uh, Singularity Sound to get you guys 10% off. So if you use code BEN10 at checkout, this will get you 10% off this new pedal, which is quite a considerable discount because obviously it's quite a pricey bit of kit. So I'll leave a link down below in the description. It'll take you over to the site and then use BEN10 at checkout to save yourself some cash. Now to be fair to Singularity Sound, their email came at a perfect time. I was actually just about to purchase one, so it sort of was uh, quite convenient. But I'd been looking at moving away from my Boss Loop pedals for quite a while now. The Boss RC600 and RC505 Mark II were like decent generational upgrades, but there was just a few fundamental flaws with them. Firstly, the launch was atrocious with, with the, uh, they were crashing and all that type of stuff, but the pedals as a whole are a nice improvement, but the MIDI clock still isn't perfect. When I try and sync it up to Ableton Live and various music production software and try and integrate it into that workflow, it's still this almost like you just got to sort of sacrifice things and sort of constantly run into issues and it's just never perfect. Whereas with this, the, the MIDI clock looks quite good. And from my sort of first thoughts, I can see this loop station being perfect for using within my studio for actually writing and producing music with music production software. I think some of the feature sets and the way this loop station operates after a few months of testing it is going to be pristine for that. But first, let's talk about the loop station itself before focusing on the MIDI pedal and how I actually am going to be using it and my overall thoughts. So the Aerios Loop Studio actually can have an insane amount of tracks. There's two different modes you can basically run this loop station in. It's two by two and then also six by six. So basically two by two gives you two loop tracks with two different parts. So basically a total of four loop tracks that you can switch between part A and part B. So you can have part A, you can have track one and track two, pretty simple dual track looping. And then you can have part B, which will have track three, track four, uh, that will basically be used for your bridge, your chorus or whatever you sort of intend to do there. So it allows you to have quite a simple setup but then when you launch into six by six mode, this gives you a total of 36 tracks that you can go absolutely crazy with. So obviously you've got six loop tracks in six separate parts. So you've got uh, part one, part two, part three, part four, four, part five, and part six, all with their own set of six loop tracks, which is absolutely mind blowing. And it took me a while to sort of get used to having this much option. The most options I've ever had is sort of like a Boss RC505 with five loop tracks and maybe having that MIDI sync to like a Boss RC300 or something. And having this 36 loop tracks in total sort of elevated things to a whole new horizon that I'd never sort of been before. Now, to be honest, it did take me a very long time to adjust to how the Aereo Sleep Studio actually works. And at first I, I didn't like it. I was like, oh, this, this is a typical thing, right? When you're like switching over something new, like oh, the old versions, so much better. But it took me a long time to get used to the overall uh, workflow and how you approach your ethos to actually building a loop completely different to all of the, the traditional loop stations or a traditional loop pedal you just kick record play overdub then you can stop your loop tracks freely whereas with the Aerios loop studio instead of stopping a loop track you sort of mute it and then unmute it it works very similar to mobius that, that that software you can integrate with ableton live sort of that mobius looping pedal software a lot of the icons are quite similar as well but the way that that software sort of works with your more muting tracks rather than stopping tracks and then you, you're unmuting them to play them it, it's sort of it's almost like a continuous infinite loop that continues playing so it took a while to adjust to that sort of way of playing and also as well I, I preferred using this with a heavy integration with the click track which is something I do anyways with the RC505 using it with a click track uh, with the Aerios Loop Studio superb oh my word because of how visual the display is it's got a touchscreen display which I'll tell you about in a second but basically because of the huge display on there you can see the exact waveform of the loop track that you've just recorded which is insane so you basically get like a live feed of exactly what you just recorded and then as you overdub on top of that as well you see it adjust with the overdub layer so you have all of the waveforms sort of stacking on each other which is very visual and then you can see the grid that the actual loop track 
is locking and quantizing too, which is fantastic for helping you improve your timing, but also making sure you press that record and play button at the correct point within your actual performance. It's groundbreaking. It, it's basically like having music production software running at your feet on a big massive screen, and you're basically sort of like controlling like logic or something, if that makes sense, uh, but you're actually obviously doing a loop performance. So the way that this device actually operates is quite interesting. So you launch into the Loop Studio, and this basically allows you to create a custom preset for each performance that you actually want to play. So inside of here, you can do your conventional things like set your time signature, and it has a huge range of time signature. You know, you don't have to just do 4-4, four, four, you can do 3-4. And then obviously you can adjust the tempo. You can manually set this, or you can just tap it in quickly if you just want to quickly drop a, a loop and you're like writing some songs, you can throw that in there and get the overall tempo of your performance that you want to do. Pretty easy stuff. Then from here, you can obviously go ahead and you can name the song and add various details from that aspect. But the most important thing is the actual loop mode that you choose. So for every single song, this is awesome, you can choose whether it's in 2x2 two two mode or 6x6. Six six. So there might be just a particular song that's super simple that only requires literally two loop tracks. So you can streamline things to just go for the 2x2 two two mode. But there may be those more complex compositions that you're actually creating where you require that 6x6 six six mode. So it gives you that sort of versatility within your set list to be switching between between the various modes. You don't have to just be fixed in one way of how the loop station operates. And then once you're happy with these overall settings, you have the option to save this onto the onboard memory or onto an external SD card. So let me quickly show you how this loop station actually works. So as you can see here, we've got the main master unit linked up to the MIDI pedal, but first let's focus on the actual loop station itself. So it is completely touchscreen, so you can dive into your, your settings using the touch screen and you can scroll around within here within these sort of global master settings this is where you can change things such as some of the audio routing so for example uh, the click track at the moment is running out this master out so you can easily hear it but within here you could change its output source to be uh, basically to a pair of headphones using these jacks on the sides so there's a lot of flexibility within these sort of master settings here and I'll just give you a brief look at some of the other things that you can sort of do what we want to particularly focus on is actually the loop studio so if we dive in to the Loop Studio. Here it will boot up sort of the main dashboard for how you can go ahead and do this. So this is some pre-saved songs with some saved presets, uh, tempos and things that I've been using. Now we can exit out just by uh, holding that down and going into our song list. And you can see here I've got a few different songs that I've sort of created and each of these songs have got different uh, tempos, time signatures and stuff from when I was testing out the Loop Station itself. Before we dive back into the Loop Studio as well, something really cool that I do want to show you is right next to this songs tab, is the Wi-Fi connection. So this device can connect to your Wi-Fi router in your house, and it, that means it can do all the firmware updates for you super easily. So you don't need to worry about like plugging it into your computer via a USB cable, downloading a load of rubbish off some website and doing the firmware. So it makes it really easy, so you always have the latest and greatest features. Back to creating a, a, an actual loop, you have the option to obviously dive in and edit the settings for each of the loop tracks. You can change where it saves to, whether it's the SD card or the onboard memory. You can also change the record time from either stereo or over to mono. So this will obviously double the actual record time that you have, 20 minutes from 10 minutes. And then as well, furthermore, within here, you can change what mode the loop station's actually running in. So right now it's in two by two mode, which is obviously uh, the, the two loop tracks, so four loop tracks uh, on the two different parts, but you can switch it out to six by six. And this will obviously give you way more loop tracks to actually work with. And you'll see them boot in just like that, which is pretty nice. Then you can use different shortcuts to sort of select the different tracks, preferably use this. So you can dive in here and obviously access those way easier. Now for this preset, I'm actually going to roll with two by two mode because we're just going to do something pretty simple. And now we'll go ahead and actually take a look at the performance. Now I am using a, a metronome with this and I have pre-assigned some metronome settings. So basically, if we go back into these settings here, I do have the metronome set to sort of count in. So you can adjust the tempo here. You can also adjust its volume as well. But I've got it just to count in one measure. So basically, when I click record, it'll go one, two, three, four, and then bam, we'll be straight into it. But you can obviously extend this out to be non, so it's instant record or two, three measures, whatever you sort of want. So we'll have that set to one, and we'll go ahead and we can tap the tempo in or we could manually set it, but we'll just go ahead and click record. Two, three, four. So there we go, we've got our first loop. Now, as you can see here, this is the grid that I was briefly referring to earlier. So you can see here, you've got basically these white lines at the start of each measure, and you have a visual representation of what the loop's actually doing, which is quite modern and dynamic. So if we were to head over to the second track, we could go ahead and click record, and it'll wait until the first measure, and we can do our drum beat, and then click 
click record and that will align. And you can see here, the drum beat's really good at, at, at visualizing this. You can see that we've absolutely nailed the timing because some of those kicks are absolutely perfectly on the, the lines within the uh, visual representation itself. Now, if we were to go ahead and do uh, an overdub, you'll see that it'll overdub basically as soon as I input anything, another additional information. So. And then now with this overdub layer, it's added that extra information and we can go ahead and hold this down to remove it if that's what we wanted to do because it wasn't the greatest <laughs> overdub in the world. Now from here, you can obviously go ahead and click stop and then it will stop all of the loops and you can press them all and it will start. But what you will have noticed is when I press stop that the metronome stopped as well. And for some performances, you might not want that to obviously happen because you want to keep playing along with the actual uh, click track itself so you stay in time. So this is where the MIDI Maestro comes into play superbly. So if we were to click play here, have all our loops playing away, and we dived into the two by two commands mode, which is a preset on here. From here, we can go ahead and we can mute the tracks individually. So we can mute the bottom track, which will mute that guitar riff. And then we can also mute the top track, but the metronome obviously proceeds to play, which is awesome. So this means, you know, we could continue uh, playing away, three, four. So I can keep on playing away. And then bring my tracks in uh, and unmute them. So this is what I was referring to earlier where basically uh, it works a little bit like Mobius. Instead of stopping tracks, you're just briefly muting them and then reintroducing them with this foot switch. This makes it so much easier. So if we actually have these tracks playing, as you'll see here, we have this next part. So we're running in two by two mode, which means there's two tracks for two sections, equaling four tracks. So if we were to click next part, this would then switch us over to section B, basically, where we could have recorded our bridge or chorus, whatever it was that we wanted to do. And then we could play that back, and then it record onto track two, then we can play that back, etc. So this is where we would head into that next part. And then you can switch back to the old part by clicking the same button. It switches you back, now we'll go to section B and then we'll go back to section one and so on. So that works really nicely. Now, what you may have noticed is when I was briefly showing you that I held down this button and this unlocked further settings. So we hold down the next part button. This then opens up the option for you to mix the loop session. Cause you may be wondering, there's no, there's no loop track faders on this. So how are you, how are you controlling any of the levels? So obviously you can hold this button down next part for a couple seconds. And then this will allow you to access each faders where you can go ahead and adjust them with the touchscreen if that's what you wanted to do. So if we played, you can see we can fade things in and out, fade our drum in, which works pretty well. But obviously if you're going to be playing with your hands, you want to use this. This is a game changing feature. So with this dial here, you can use your foot basically to turn things up and down. Now by default, this will usually control your master volume. So it'd be your master volume for all the loops but inside of the mixing page, it will control whatever you've currently got selected. And the way you select things is just by clicking the select button and it will switch you between track one, switch you between track two, and then switch you back obviously over to the master. And then you have the option to just mute like so. Now, one of my favorite things about this loop station has to be the overall form factor. So obviously because it can do so many loop tracks, conventionally, usually a loop station, the more tracks it has, the bigger and bulkier the unit actually becomes. Whereas this is super compact. Even when you combine it with the MIDI Maestro to expand the foot switches, which I highly recommend purchasing. If you are going to be getting this uh, loop pedal, the MIDI Maestro just makes it so much easier to operate. So obviously you've already got like three foot switches predominantly other than your all start or stops. You've got four, four foot switches. When you're in six by six mode, that it just really isn't enough to operate that amount of loop tracks efficiently and quickly. Uh, you know, put yourself a lot of pressure on yourself when you're actually playing with the looper. Whereas with the MIDI Maestro, it expands it and the great thing about the MIDI Maestro is everything's pre-assigned so you could use literally any MIDI foot pedal if you wanted to it supports MIDI and you assign your CC values and everything but the MIDI Maestro comes pre-mapped so everything's plug and play you just throw it in it's got all the presets set up for everything that this, this looper pedal can actually do via MIDI plus it also has these really nice LCD uh, displays on the actual pedal that explains what each foot switch is doing so you don't need to get the, the, the duct tape out and start marking it up with a marker pen this is your know, clear this is play whatever it does all of that for you the only drawback that I would say about the MIDI Maestro is it does have the old style of foot switches on it. So with the gold edition, one of the biggest selling points of this new loop pedal is the silent foot switches that they've added. So when you now press these uh, foot switches in, they're completely silent. 
which is a huge improvement over the previous generation. A lot of complaints were that the, the pedals were a little bit too loud. Well, obviously, the MIDI ma Maestro, Maestro, <laughs> I can't say that word, MIDI Maestro uh, has the old foot switches on there. Uh, and then I don't think they're that loud, to be honest. I don't think they're loud at all. Now, the final thing that I want to talk about with this looper pedal is a couple of things that I don't really like about it too much. Now, I think for a lot of people, it might be quite a lot to think about because it's quite an advanced loop station. This isn't like just sort of like a mid rangey looper pedal where you go, oh, yeah, I can sort of use that. It's got a few extra tracks. This is like, I would say, like the hardcore side of loop stations. It's got all of the advanced features for really complex setups, a bit similar to like what I've got here, my live looping rig with you know loads and loads of instruments. From that perspective, I feel like for, for a few people sort of purchasing this loop pedal, it might be a little bit overwhelming because even, even for myself, you know, I've got lots of experience with loop stations. I had to think a lot in terms of how the way the grid worked and how the, the loops came in and out and, 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 and unmuting them and things. I'm not ready yet to use it in a live situation. I've, and I've been testing it for about uh, one or two months. I feel like I need a good probably four, five months with it before I could take this out in an environment and be as confident with it as I am with obviously the boss loop stations that I've been using since I was a kid, like since like 12. Uh, so uh, like 10 years, over 10 years. It's such an awesome and capable pedal, but every time I practice with it, it's like, ah, oh, I forgot that it did that. Or, oh, I've got to go back and why is it doing that? that? That type of situation. But with that being said, I can see it working insanely well. I'm just about to re-kit this room out with like a full music production setup and things like that for different content that I want to make on this channel. And I, oh my word, I can see this loop station being at the heart of that music production workflow. And the Aerios Loop Studio, because of its super high quality audio stuff, it records all of the audio files. You can export them onto a micro SD card. I can just throw them straight into my uh, working software, my workstation software and start editing them. And also the MIDI syncing capabilities will mean I'll be able to just sync this up to you know the clock device inside of Ableton and have no issues. It's going to be perfect. And then in addition to that, you've got the touchscreen element of it. So when you put it on your desk, you can just browse around on the touchscreen, create your presets, export things, save things, and it's going to be perfect. So I could see it being at the center of my new desk setup that we're actually setting up within an actual music production studio. So you can have that almost hybrid workflow between like traditional songwriting on a loop pedal naturally and digitally with obviously your computer. Another little negative, especially considering sort of the price point of this pedal, is also the lack of inputs and also audio routing options that the pedal sort of has. So when you look at the, the inputs and outputs on the back, it's very basic. You've just literally got sort of two guitar inputs. You've got some aux stuff. You've got two outputs. There isn't any XLR jacks, so you can't connect any microphones directly into the pedal. So it will require you to also have an additional mixing deck where you can have all of your instruments. Because you've got to bear in mind, this loop station has so many tracks, you know, six by six mode, 36 tracks. You've got so many tracks that you're obviously going to use a million instruments with this. You're not just going to be using an acoustic guitar and like, that's it. So it's a little bit annoying that it doesn't have even just an XLR input or just a few extra like guitar jack inputs, like four guitar jack inputs. So you can have multiple instruments like a keyboard, a guitar, a bass guitar, or a, a drum, drum thing like drum pads or whatever. So it will require you to have an additional mixer where you can plug everything in and then send a mix out like a submix directly into the pedal, which is stuff we've been doing for years anyways with the Boss RC505, any Boss loop station, but obviously with the new generation of the RC505 Mark II and the RC600, that having multiple input jacks and also the Head Rush Looper board, all of those having multiple input jacks available directly on the pedal, just unlocks a little bit more versatility with how you can route audio to particular loop tracks. And that's just a little bit lacking on this pedal. Don't forget to check out that link down below in the video description and use the coupon code BEN10 to save yourself 10% off an Aerios Loop Studio. It's a pretty awesome bit of kit and I will definitely be using this in my new studio setup. So subscribe to that video when we build it out and you'll see how I begin to use this within the future. But for now, if you want some basic tips on how to use a loop station, you should check out this video next.